<clears throat> so this presentation is just to introduce the group work, just a bit of an overview of the different project. Uh, so you know what to expect. So there are two projects that you can choose from, maybe a third, depends a little bit on your preference, but I'll ask uh, around later on. So we have, we start, I start with project three because that's convenient. Um, so uh, project three would be short read RNA sequencing of mouse uh, samples. So uh, that data set uh, comes from a very big publication, I think in one of the high-end journals, I think I thought it was Nature. Um, and um, it has some very nice RNA seq data set, uh, relatively straightforward. And the aim here is to compare high set two uh, to both type two, two different aligners. So you will learn more about aligners uh, tomorrow, but the idea is to generate two different alignments and compare the two and see what kind of differences you find, for example, in the, in the alignment files. Well, of course, first you would need to do the quality control and everything. So that's something you can already start with today and tomorrow afternoon. Project one is short read RNA sequencing of Arabidopsis italiana. I don't know why I have this animation like this, but um, so that's uh, another project. It's very similar to the mouse uh, project. Also there you will compare high set two to bow tie two. Main difference between the two is that the Arabidopsis italiana genome is, I think it's about 300 mega base pairs or so. So 0.3 giga base pairs. Well, the mouse genome is, I think, about three giga base pairs. So the uh, Arabidopsis italiana genome is about 10 times smaller compared to the mouse genome, which means that you can use the whole data set for Arabidopsis, while you can only use a subset of the data set for, for mouse. Doesn't really matter for both of them. The concept is clear that you need to uh, compare these, these two aligners. So um, what you'll get, um, you can read all about that in the, in the group work page, is you get um, the sequence data. You need to download that uh, sequence data and with that sequence data, you are asked to go through all the steps that you will perform in the course uh, during the exercises. So you need to do quality control and trimming. Uh, later on, we will of course also do alignment, for example, on the E. coli data set and visualization. And uh, you're also expected to do that with the real data. So the Arabidopsis or the mouse data. Um, depending a bit on how far you will get, uh, you might also do some counting to estimate gene expression. So this is rna -seq data and usually what you're why you are doing RNA sequencing data is because you're interested in gene expression. And if you count the number of alignments per gene, you get an idea of the expression of a gene. And you, are, you can compare the, for example, the two aligners and how that has an effect on the count table, which you, will, which you can later use to estimate gene expression, for example. Um, so three important uh things i wanted to mention here so do not only perform the calculations but also try to get an idea of what you are doing and what the outputs are always check the outputs do you get do you get the expected result for example you will learn more about file types during the course obviously so you can put that directly into practice be reproducible meaning try to follow these five simple rules to uh, at least have some reproducible scripts with the numbering and everything. Um, <clears throat> and last but not least, in the afternoon of day three, all groups, so we have five groups of five people, will give a 10 minute presentation. So it is always a bit of uh, a challenge. So I'm doing this now for the third or the fourth time. It's always, um, I think it's always super nice because people really go from, let's say, zero really beginners to actually performing uh, a, a night uh, analysis. Um, is who does, does what within a group? And usually that goes quite easy. And sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit, uh, well, it's a bit challenging, depending a little bit on, you know, the type of people who are in a group who want to do what and everything. So there, there are multiple ways you can do that. What I would suggest, 
and that's quite important, I think, is that at least the data you're working with, so the reads you're going to download, um, are uh, in one directory. You have a shared directory. I will show that uh, later on where that is. You have a shared directory, and please put your reads uh, in there. So you do not download, not everybody downloads um, the reads in their home directory, for example, because otherwise it becomes full quite quickly. So start from the same reads, download them only once for the group. Other than that, you can either say, okay, somebody is going to do, for example, uh, going, going to focus on the alignment, one on the quality control and one on something else. Or you can say, okay, we are going to kind of work individually. So everybody's going to do everything. And at some point or during the process, we are going to communicate how things are going as you're going to help each other out. I think the latter one is the easiest way. So that you do everything individually, but you ask your peers if things are not clear to you, for example. So this is a typical example of a reverse classroom where you teach each other stuff. Of course, I'll be around. I'll be visiting uh, the breakout rooms very often. So don't worry about that. And if you doubt uh, about anything or if, if you get frustrated or whatever, just let me know and I'll help you out.